Hi, and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Rick. And I'm Sarah. And today we're back with our friend and homebrew guru, Scott Russell. Scott, thanks for making the trip My over. My pleasure. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Um, so we brewed a beer with Scott. Um, it's actually his recipe that he developed especially for us. Uh, we brewed this a couple of months ago, and it's finally ready, and we're going to taste it today. Um, and so, Scott, can you give us just a little overview of what we what we did, what your recipe Boy, was about? You're, you're asking me to remember two months ago. Oh, yeah, okay. Now, well, it basically, you know, it was intended to be a New England style IPA. So, right. you know, something in the in the neighborhood of a hitty topper or a sip of sunshine kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So that means that it's um, very fruity and aroma forward rather than hoppy bitterness like a you know like a West Coast IPA. So right. the hops we chose emphasize the the sweeter, fruitier aromas and and late oil flavors. Um, and I can't. You know, I'm not going to name the specific hops. I think you have to pay for the recipe, right? If right. Oh, no, well, it's a great one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, a little plug in there, right? There you go. <laughs> so um, to to make this just a little bit more, um, you know, grounded in the in the Vermont experience, we added a couple of things that were not typical in an IPA, typically brewed in a commercial brewery. You can do that if you're a home brewer because you have no rules. Basically, you can right. add whatever you want. So make we that. did add some maple syrup yep. as part of the sweetness, as part of the fermentables. And we finished it with some spruce tips, mm -hmm. which were locally picked here in Tunbridge. And uh, the maple syrup was also local, right? So it was right. keep it as local as possible. And um, that was what makes it different from other versions of the Moon IPA. Right. We had an oak, oak chip component, Oak chips too. that had been soaked in uh, the tamarack liqueur, right? Right, was, which is an out-of-print maple liqueur. Oh, but we right. do have a substitute for that in our in our recipe. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's what we so did. We'll, we'll crack one. Um, Feel free to chat, guys. I'm going to pour out the beers while we're talking. And we'll <laughs> Please, the pour the beers. So you mentioned the spruce stitch. You yeah. harvested those yourself, yep. correct? Yep. Were they on your own property? They are, yep. I've got a, a series of uh, blue spruce, Colorado blue spruce planted around the yard. And so you probably have like a, a good brewer's garden. What other things do you use that are around your own property that um, you've used in brewing? We have the little black cherries, which are dynamite in a stout. Mm -hmm. a nice, nice touch to a stout. Um, I've used dandelions, obviously, to make dandelion wine. Mm -hmm. We have elderberries, we have currants, we have things like that. Um, I've got five, 35 or 40 apple trees, and we do make cider whenever there's a good apple year. There isn't much this year, unfortunately, so probably not pressing, but those kinds of things. Um, otherwise, um, I do grow you know, a fair amount of my own hops as well. Um, from year to year, the harvest will, you know, will dictate what I can use, what I can't use. Um, that's pretty much it for for what I grow because I don't I don't brew you know brewets or herbed beers too often so mm -hmm. not something I'm looking for necessarily but okay mm -hmm. yeah. thanks for sharing yeah I, uh, we speaking of elderberries there'll be some future videos coming up about using elderberries possibly as a brewing ingredient as well mm -hmm. yeah mm. A lot nice. of maple on the nose, isn't there? Yeah, it's a real strong. I was, I was gonna ask Scott before Toffee. he takes the first step. Does he have a Does he have a prediction on what what the predominant flavors are gonna be? I, based on the smell. I you know based on the smell. I mean, I, the, the maple nice is color. certainly a character. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's it's hazy though too, which yeah. is not un, unusual when that's the New England style. Sure. Yeah. It's meant to be. Not, it is darker than I expected it to be. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Yeah. I was wondering about this. So speaking of maple syrup, in addition to the maple syrup, sorry about that, Sarah. In addition to the maple syrup being used in the brewing process, we bottled it with maple exactly. syrup as well. So, I mean, it's really challenging to get both flavor and or smell out of maple syrup without using a lot of it, but this came through pretty well. All right, mm -hmm. cheers, everybody. Cheers, indeed. Yeah, cheers. Mm. Oh, that's nice. There's a lot of spruce character in the first sip, first taste. Mm. Yeah. And we didn't even use a ton of spruce. I mean, it was, no, a, it was, it was a touch. Like handful it was a handful. Or so. It was Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which was steeped for, what, five minutes or something. something. Like it wasn't a lot. But it yeah. definitely comes through there without yeah. being turpentine. Exactly. Middles, I mean, None of the, the pine salt, as I call it. Yeah. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah. It, yeah. It, that's as and an aside. something really sweet underneath. Well, in the, in the I'm sure it's odor the, and the... It might be the oak. It might be the liqueur from the oak. Mm -hmm. I found it in... The finish is there. There's you, there's almost that liqueur, whatever, mm. that, the tamarack liqueur is like mm -hmm. almost the coating on my tongue at the finish of it. Yeah. And it, a little hint of like the burn of alcohol just at the finish, yeah. just on your tongue. Yeah. This is this is a fair amount of oak yeah. and vanilla. It's pretty kind of boozy thing there too. too. I was about to say, I was ready to take the hit if the beer wasn't very good because I did delay the process of, of retrieving the oak chips from this and I could probably let it sit in the secondary yeah, after a that a little longer. So there might have been some oxidation from the headspace there. 
Um, I tried to, but no, I'm pleased. I'm mm -hmm. particularly pleased with the head. The on head that. retention is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And we heard a nice. I don't know if you guys can hear it. When I was opening this bottle, we got a nice carbonation. Without <laughs> no gusher though. No gushers. So that's good. Nope, just a nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was looking away when I was speaking to Scott, and I heard that, and I was tempted to look around to see if it had a gusher. So, mm -hmm. all right. No, nope, all right. That's really good. Yeah. Well done, team. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very good. Um, to me, it's not. I think because we've added so many different things yeah. to it, it's not anywhere in the realm of oh, kind no, of what our definitely. base beer was. Oh, yeah. This is this but, is not a cloning of any sort. Thing. It is a style with a twist that Scott created just for us. Right. And we're very very pleased with that mm -hmm. and appreciative yeah. as well. I guess I do get some of that maltiness, mm -hmm. like you would get from a sip of sunshine or something. Yeah. Well, this has a pretty. Yeah. Robust malty. Well, I think that the sip of sunshine is another beer where there's a lot of sugar added actually mm -hmm. to reduce that amount of to malt make it feel. thinner. They make yeah. it a little thinner, well, and that's why you find it maybe, kind of sweet. Maybe maltiness is in the right, is in the right descriptor, but not so not the heavy chewiness of using malt, but that sugar, that sweetness. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Well, I'm pleased, and I'm glad there's more. Uh, <laughs> and speaking of which, uh, you, you want to brew it yourself? You can go to the website. And sign up for the newsletter, and we'll send you a copy. And also, we wanted to uh, send off a bit here to Scott oh. as a thank you. Oh. Mm. So we have awesome with the labels and all, each one of them also individually labeled. Cool. And we'll have close-ups of that uh, that you can click through, or you'll probably see in the video once it's done. So Scott, awesome. thank you very much. Thank you, absolutely. We appreciate yeah. Yeah, my pleasure your participation in this. <laughs> and maybe we'll link to um, the, how you made your labels too, because okay. there's yeah, a trick, there's a trick to getting us to stick on the bottles without glue. Without glue, so, so it's real simple. If you make your own labels or you uh, clean your own bottles, you hate when you get a bottle you're trying to take off that and it's too gummy and you're spending all these time. These will come right off without any uh, residue. Mm -hmm. Great. Right. Yeah. Super. So. Well, thanks again, Scott. Anytime. And uh, we look forward to our next brew day with you. Absolutely. Hopefully we can do this again. Let's, let's make a plan. Um, I'm also hoping, although we don't have a specific date set, that at some point in the future we'll be able to do a collaborative class with Scott and have some of you guys come up and participate in a brew day. So we'll, be fun. we'll keep working on that idea. If you have suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments on this video below. Um, and again, don't forget to check out the show notes. We'll have links to where you can sign up for the newsletter to get the full recipe, as well as links to the brew day that we did a few months ago. Um, so you can watch us brew this beer. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to uh, get up to date uh, recipes and other things. Yeah, exactly. Other tips and uh, brew notes, that kind of thing. Great. Thanks again for joining us, everybody. Cheers. Bye.